this week's challenge is a continuation from last week's challenge, where we were looking at the inventory ordering of Chin and Beard Suds Co's for different scents. So everything in this dark blue colour, that's all last week's challenge. But you can see how we're connecting into it for this week's challenge. So what we're wanting to do is basically the old model was built on the assumption that each scent is ordered a hundred times in an average day. So um, multiply that by seven, each week you order 700 bars of that soap. But if we challenge that assumption based on the data that we have to work out how many bars are actually ordered on average per day, then we will see that it's actually much less than 100, it's about half of that. So what uh, savings can we bring by only ordering sort of the average amount as it truly is rather than the average amount that was assumed before? So we get to this value by just doing an aggregate after joining together the daily sales and the cent and working out the units sold here. So we get that average by grouping on the cent and doing an average on the units sold field. So that's how we get to that step. And then we're doing a little bit of rounding. So we always read inside out, obviously the calculations. So the first thing that we're doing is we're taking the ceiling value of the average units sold. So that means that we're rounding up. And that means that, that um, this average unit sold here, that's uh, 54.28. That would be rounded upwards to 55. And say this one would go to 50, this one would go to 53. It just goes to the highest um, integer. So it rounds upwards to the nearest integer. And then when we round it to the nearest 10, which we achieve via this minus one, there's a great blog by um, a data scholar called Nick, who has written um, a blog about understanding the round function and how minus one actually rounds to the nearest 10, minus two round to the nearest 100, etc. It's all to do with sort of where you're going from the decimal point. I'll link that in the description. Um, so then we're rounding it to the nearest 10. So for example, for this top row, we would get to 60 because we have 55 from the ceiling function, then we round it upwards to 60. Um, obviously the next row would just stay at 50, etc., and so forth. And then we're multiplying it by seven because that's the average ordered per day. And then we multiply it by seven to make it the average ordered per week. So that's great. We've got those values now. We can get rid of that extra field as well. So now um, where we get to our weekly sales, which is this point, we can now just join this in. We can rename it to be uh, units ordered as we have here. Um, so we just need to remove it from that aggregate step up there. The units ordered where we have calculated our week, each week, each cent, weekly sales, how much was sold, the price and the cost. You may not have the price flowing through from uh, your previous week's solution. You just need to go back to the step and make sure that you don't remove that field, for example. So we join it again on the cent here so that we just have our units ordered for every single cent for every single week because this is where we aggregate it to the weekly level. So once we've joined that in, then that will help us there. And then we're just doing a lot of sort of unpicking of calculations. So we get rid of a few duplicate fields here and then we're looking into our waste, which is our units ordered minus units sold naturally. And obviously we see we get some negative values if I just expand that into the detail. That's where we've um, not ordered enough, so we would have to tell customers that it would be out of stock. So we need to retrospectively fit that to our sales. So the way that we're doing that is we're saying, well, if we're, we're creating a field called understocked, and that's where the waste is less than zero, then how many will be understocked by? Basically take the absolute value of um, that field, that negative field. Otherwise, just leave it as a zero because um, we weren't understocked, we were able to sell every time the customer wanted to buy. So then we're adjusting the weekly sales and the way that we do that is that ignore the round function for now, just cause we're doing an inside out reading of our calculations. We're taking the weekly sales, we're minusing off the understocked, how many, um, units we were understocked by and multiplying that by the price because that would be, need to be minus from our weekly sales total and um, we're just rounding it to two decimal places. 
so that gives us an updated weekly sales. So if we take the um, 420 value, for example, here in the second row, I think that's quite an easy one to see. So it's 462, the price of it is a pound, we're 42 understocked. So we minus 42 from 462 and we get 420, nice and easy. We also need to update the units sold naturally because we won't have sold that many, so we're just minusing off. So again, that sort of 462 goes down to 420. And then we're just updating these waste so that anything negative just goes to a zero because yeah, um, we just wouldn't have sold it. So therefore it wouldn't have been wasted, et cetera and so forth. So uh, once we've done that, then we're looking to calculate the profit. Now, what I did at this step was I copied this step here and pasted it and joined it up. Um, so if you're not familiar with how to do that, I'm literally just copy, paste, it always goes somewhere very unhelpful, like up here. So I just drag that over here and then say if I wanted to attach that to my clean eight step, I just drag that step up to it and add it. And that's how you sort of reuse a step quite helpfully. Now we've already created our waste, so we need to get rid of this first calculation, calculating the waste. And then we go from here just as normal. Um, we don't need to update anything else because it just calculates our profit for us. It calculates the waste cost and then we just do the weekly sales minus the waste cost. And then we're just aggregating in much the same way as before on the cent and we're summing that profit, renaming it new profit. And you can already see the values are much higher. We're joining it to the same step that we had before on the cent, and then we're just minusing from the new profit, we're minusing the total profit, and we're rounding it all to two decimal places just to make it look a lot neater. So we can see that by basically reducing um, the, the stock that we're ordering each week by about half, roughly, then we're making a lot more profit. So that would be great to show to the execs of Chin and Beard Sutsuko. So I hope that was a fun addition to the challenge from last week. I just couldn't stop playing with the data set. So thank you for listening and goodbye.